me what song and what movie that riff that I just played is from, I will send you, if you're the first person to tell me, I will send you every single Fingers of Steel book published by Fullcraft that I have put out there. Every single one. But you have to be the first, and you have to get it right. Not just the movie, but the song title as well. <laughs> I have no idea why I started with that one, but it's because we're not going to be dealing with 7-4 or 7-8 time. We will be, however, dealing with four other time signatures that you're going to run into a whole bunch, no matter whether you're a beginner, an intermediate, or an advanced player. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Dulce America. My name is Bing Futch. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, the month of May 2022 has been a great month for looking at rhythm, how rhythm can be effective, how we can study, learn, internalize and feel rhythm, and then bring that to the table for any piece of music that we're going to play. So I wanted to do one for all skill levels and just give you a few very, very basic, very, very easy exercises to strengthen your rhythm hand and get you to the point where you can kind of forget about what you're doing here and think more about what you're doing in terms of melody, harmony, chords, things like that. So let's go ahead and step in first of all, with a time signature that many of us play in all the time and don't realize it, it's 2-4. Two, 2-4 four. Two, four is uh, two beats per measure, and the quarter note gets the beat. So there are two quarter notes in every measure. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. It is basically used for marches uh, and very, very quick tunes. Uh, so marches, fiddle tunes, you know, all fill in uh, into that 2-4. They all fit in that 2-4 category. So here's a cool little thing, and we've covered it a little bit already in uh, the episodes this month. I want you to think about that one as the downbeat, yes. But I want you to think about the accent, the emphasis that we play is going to be on beat 2. So hit the downbeat, and then hit that second beat a little bit louder. So we end up with this. pretty groovy stuff. Let me use my right hand palm mute. Take away some of the clatter and the rattle of the uh, drone and strings open and you'll hear clear. Two, 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 two. Got my head fake going on. The body's moving. This makes you want to move, doesn't it? This is the basic feel behind any groove that really makes you want to move. In Western time, of course, 4-4 four, four time, 2-4 time. That's very, very groovy stuff right there. So, without using the right hand palm mute, good practice is to simply play your 2-4 and make sure it's downbeat and then loud on the second beat. Now let's reverse that and put the emphasis on the downbeat, on beat one, and play that a little bit louder, and not play two as loud, and then watch how this subtle shift changes the feeling of the measures. Not as much head fake going on, not as groovy, because that feels more like marching, doesn't it? One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Left, right, left. Ooh, that's not good for dancing. Let's try that again. Let's put the emphasis on the second beat. One and two and three and here we go. One and two and three and now oh, the head fake is back. So there is the secret to get more bounce out of your music, whether it be 2-4 four, or 4-4. Four, four. If you're in 4-4, four, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Same thing is happening, whereas if we play on beats one and three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, we get that marching. Let's stick with 4-4 four, four for a second, and let me give you one of my uh, go-to kind of strums, and a couple of them. But the first thing I want you to do is look at this. One, two, three, four. 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 
try that exercise where you are playing strums on beats one and two. One, two, and then on beats three and four, just pick two of the strings. They can be next to each other, or you can cross pick and go bass and melody like that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's a nice way of breaking up strums, especially if you're going to be doing a strum and then working some melody in. That little exercise will get you prepared to do a partial kind of a mixture of what's happening in the measure. And there will be a lot of situations where you're going to find yourself mixing, strumming, and flat picking, picking one note at a time, doing things like that. I like a one, two, three, and four and as a all-purpose strum. That's straight one, two, three, and four and because you can kind of program it in your head, in your hand rather. And if you're playing tunes, the quarter note part of it, and actually what I'll do is one, two, three, one, two, three, and four and that means one, two, and three. Those beats all can support quarter note melodies. One, two. Three. The and four and is there ready for you if you want to put a little get up and go at the end of a measure if you have time. And if you don't have time, you can still play it as a straight quarter note if that's what the melody is doing. Boiled in cabbage is a perfect example of that. Two, three, four. something something at the end of the measure on the bass and middle string. Uh, so I like to do a one, two, three, and four, and one. If we're swinging that, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and. I'll start the giddy up and go with that particular, and I, um, I do have a name for it. It's one, two, three, banana. One, two, three, banana. I love using that for any kind of a fiddle tune because I can alter it and pay attention to what the melody needs from me rhythmically. And then when it needs no longer my assistance in that respect, then I can go over and add my fill-in rhythms very, very easy. Uh, let me pick a fiddle tune out of the blue here. <laughs> on two and four, one and, 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 um, and then those are all eight notes pretty much, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So that four, we can put a little something in there, right? One. That's where I put my extra in. put him after every move of the melody. And that I think is more artistic license than anything, it's just an arrangement sort of a thing. So trust your instinct when it comes to that sort of move. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and that's a good one to practice if you are working with four, four time. Now, let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, I got a delivery. Very nice. Let's take a look at three-quarter time. That's a waltz time, very popular. So, one, two, three beats in the measure. Quarter note gets the beat. One, two, three. One, two, three is what we're doing. So, the emphasis largely there is going to be on the one. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. I'm going full strong. 
and then arpeggiating on bass and middle. Depending on what's in this, uh, required of me as far as the melody is concerned, I can come in and easily work that in on the melody string. Now, what if I'm just doing accompaniment and we need a little extra rhythm there? I don't want to get too complicated with a, uh, a waltz strum, but a nice one is to simply follow a straight quarter note pattern, but maybe shorten beats two and three a little bit like this. There might even be an absence of a chord on the downbeat with just chords on two and three. If you're playing all of it together, you can do that strum and then do your two and three on the bass and on the middle string if you like. So one, two, three. 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 Or add a little extra something something on your twos and threes, maybe some eighth notes. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one. Going to the bass and middle string on two and three and avoiding the melody string enable me to get that under my fingers and prepare for the idea that there may be a melody note on the melody string that doesn't deserve to be cut in half many times. So I'm avoiding it so I can play a melody and have something going on in the background. So a three-quarter strum, very, very, very handy to have. Now a three-four strum on steroids, I guess, would be six-eight, just double each number, and we end up with six-eight, six beats in the measure, and the eighth note gets the beat. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. You can do a lot of really lovely ballads and airs in six-eight. You could also do a lot of really intense type of uh, pieces in six-eight as well, because it lends itself well to this sort of a thing. example of a 6-8 time signature that you're going to hear in a tune would be something like the Road to Listune of Orna. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Our big impulse points there are going to be one and four. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Notice my strum, and this might be a little weird, but I try and remain consistent with my strums, meaning going out on numbers, coming in on ands, but using alternating pick direction when I can. Watch what happens in six, eight timing with my in and out strums. Primarily, I can be an inward strummer, but I do prefer sometimes to go inward, right? But watch what happens if I use straight internet, internet, what, watch what happens if I use straight alternating pick direction. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So my, my one and four are happening in opposite directions. My emphasis is going to go out on one and on four if I'm going to go 
the other direction, opposite direction each time. I can reset myself if I want to. One, two, three, four, five, six, and do two strokes in one direction. To me, that seems a bit more confusing. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. That feels weird in my hands versus one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. It actually doesn't seem to take as much brain work to simply do the alternating pick direction versus resetting. So I'm always going out on those accents. You might be different. It might be completely different for you. So if it works for you doing that the other way, go ahead and do that. Whatever works is the key here for sure. So we've got a couple of, well, we've got four different patterns that are great exercises to get thoughtless, mindless about what you're doing with your right hand. We have our two, four. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, or one, two, one, two, or one, two, one, two, one, two. We've got our four, four count. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, or one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Our waltz, three, four, downbeat on one. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, or we could do uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Or we go one, two, three, three, one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and, one, two, and, three, and finally six, eight. Big, biggest one here I would think would be one and four. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Not a lot of room to throw other stuff into the mix there. Uh, and in most cases, you probably won't have to. But having that driving uh, emphasis on one and four will definitely make your 6-8 tunes something truly danceable. Well, thank you very much for tuning in, everybody. I hope you had a great time this month with our look at rhythm. Coming up in the month of June, we'll be focusing on melody. I mean, really just focusing on melody from using scales to what melodies tend to do, to uh, how to guess where a melody is going to go. We'll do that for all of our uh, mountain dulcimer skill levels and of course all skill levels as well. Have a great time everybody. Hope you're having a great, great spring and I'm looking forward to seeing you throughout the summer. Thanks again everybody, we'll see you soon.